How many of you have ever stumbled in the dark? When you stumble in the dark, you fall over things. When you stumble in the dark, you don't know exactly where you're going. Well, this is 2017. And as we stumble in the dark and we begin to see light and you begin to head toward the light, then you don't have to stumble like you did when you were in total darkness. Things become more clearer and clearer and clearer as you head towards the light. And when you get close enough to the light, then you can really, really begin to see what you are surrounded by and begin to see your environment. That is how it is in this struggle we call black liberation. This is, this is the process that we must go through in order to find ourselves our ancient ancestors, our brothers and sisters of the past had to do a lot of stumbling and we still have not reached the total light. But now, 2017, almost or over a hundred years, I'm not really sure, uh, y'all are the experts on that, but 100 years or a little over after Marcus Garvey, you would think that after 100 years, after the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, we should finally see the light. But unfortunately, that's not the case. We are still stumbling. And the reason why we are still stumbling is because we're not using our mind in order to go toward the light. We find a place in the darkness. And for many there is comfort, there is solace in the darkness. You know, you can be in love with somebody and you find a dark place, you know, to do your thing. You know, you might want to smoke a little weed and you find a little dark corner or drink a little something, something, and you don't want everybody to disturb your groove and you hide in the darkness. So there are many who don't actually like the fact that light be exposed upon them or shown on them. They don't want the light. There are some who actually benefit from darkness because they want you to view them as the light. So if you view them as the light, then they get the benefits of the sun when they are not the sun. They are artificial light and there's a difference when you grow plants under artificial light rather than real sunlight it's a difference the earth and the life of this planet does not evolve or revolve around artificial light but the light of the god the, the first god the sun the only real God, the sun, along with this planet and both of them together brings forth life to us. We have to begin to think for ourselves and re-examine these things that was given or come from up out of darkness 
so we can see them for what they really are and continue moving, progressing forward and come into the uh, real light so that we can see for real. Having said that, and most of you already know, I'm not telling you nothing that you really don't know, but many of you have become comfortable in where you are. And you cannot become comfortable in where you are, not if you are alive. When you are comfortable where you are and you are alive, then you become sick. And when you are sick, laying in the bed, you are alive but you're sick and comfortable lying down, then you get what you call bed sores. In order not to get bed sores, somebody has to move your body around so that you don't get these sores on your, on your body. And that's the same thing in dealing with this so-called black scholarship information. You're getting bed sores because you've been, you become comfortable and think that you have found the light and you have not. Let us deal with the reality of things here. Now, there is a, a, a time in your life maybe, or we can use this as an example. You have a friend, and you know, and you saw that your friend's spouse was with another person. And being a friend, you know that you're risking your friendship because you know that your friend is really, really in love with the person that they married. And you tell them, they don't want to hear that. And this is not something that you guess. You know. You know that their spouse is having an affair with somebody else. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to accept reality. And then one day, reality hits. They find out, and it's heartbreaking because reality equates to truth, and truth hurts. So it is with this teaching we've been giving. And We've been taught that slavery did not begin with, uh, black history did not begin with slavery. But the reality of it, it did. It did because history, the story of him, the story of her, black, the story of the black, and the story of the black begins with the races. There are no dark skinned people on this planet that call themselves black. There are no dark skinned people on this planet that ever called themselves black, African, Negro, color, and all that kind of stuff prior to Europeans. So we're talking about the history of black people. And this black man did not appear. Listen, the black man, the black people did not appear until the Caucasian people produced them because at first they would call them some of them Africans but later on this label of African would disappear and then they would only simply be called black because black is a product of races just like you breed a dog just like you breed a cow and you have all these different varieties the german shepherd the the, the rock wild all these are different breeds of dogs and that's the way these human beings these dark-skinned people was treated and bred you was bred just like the labrador re retriever was bred to to uh go out in the water and retrieve a duck we, our ancestors, we come from a people who was bred to be the world's most perfect slave. And you still have that behavior. You still have that attitude of being a, a slave. You have to serve somebody or someone. If you're not praising a, a person, a human being, you are worshiping some kind of alien or a spaceship or some supreme being. You got to, 
the, the very thought of not worshiping and serving somebody makes you go crazy because you have a slave mentality. You can't even, the thought of not serving somebody or someone, you can't even fathom the, the thought because we were bred, our ancestors, we were bred for the purpose of being a slave. There is no direct connection. Not all of it sounds pretty. When you talk about Egypt and ancient Ethiopia and all these other different, and the Moors. Where is your direct connection? You have no direct connection to no Moor, nobody in Kemet, nobody in ancient Ethiopia. None of these things that you talk about, that's your history. How is it your history? What do you have to do with ancient Egypt what do you have to where is your connection you have none just like many of us you cannot claim your father's car that he that he was driving in 1954 matter of fact he does not even own the car anymore here you are you wasn't born to 1964 how can you claim the car that your father was driving in 1954 you cannot do that you did not even exist the black man and woman of this nation did not even exist until the racist caucasian people who took different various dark-skinned people and he even added his own blood into this new being this new species of dark-skinned people and he called us black negro colored he named his new creation we are the white man's Frankenstein monster. And now he has no need for this perfect slave. And he's in a position, I don't know what to do with them. Just like, oh, just like they struggle with the dog and cat population. There's too many dogs and cats. What we gonna do with them? So all over the country, they are euthanizing uh, 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 dogs and cats. And, and spaying them, neutering them. They don't know what to do. How do we control the pet population? And so here we are in 2017, and that is the same type of attitude. You find yourself living with races. We got all these Negroes. We got all these blacks in the country. We don't need them really no more. What are we going to do with them? So you have abortion clinics all in the black community. They give you guns so you can shoot yourself because you're certainly not killing them. They give you drugs and alcohol and abortion clinic and bad food. How are we going to control the pet population? Mm, mm, mm. Woo. Your history. Because you have no connection. Everybody with dark skin does not mean that you are related to them. This is illogical thinking. If that's the case, I'm going to come to your house, open the door and go to your refrigerator. As soon as I walk in your yard, you're going to tell me, hey, Negro, what's up? Well, we, we black. We relate. I'm just coming to see what you got in your refrigerator. You know, uh, hey, we family. Negro, if you don't get out of here, you'll call the police on me just like that. Everybody that's dark skinned is not your family. Just because the Egyptians, just because the ancient Ethiopians, the, the Moors, just because they were, they look or look similar to you or they were, are black, doesn't mean you have any kind of uh, connection to them. No biological connection to them. And you don't have a biological connection to them because you were born and our origins come from a different place. We were bred right here in America right in the womb of America by these races. The same way they breed, they breed corn and okra and chickens and hogs the same way. And you know this, but you can't accept your reality. We don't need these fairy tale stories no more. Y'all really need to grow up. Grow up and accept reality. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. 
So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. How would I like to begin to speak with us on this issue, this particular topic? Brothers, so brothers and sisters, how long have we been in this condition? Do, I'm trying to understand. Do you like it? I mean, I hear your complaint and I see that you're upset, but it seems as though you do like it because if you don't like it, then why don't you change it? And, it, and, and, and in order to change it, you must fight. But you don't have the will to fight. Why you don't want to fight the white man? I know the, listen, I understand the guy, he's pretty tough. I mean, he can send a drone to your house right now and blow you to bits. I mean, he's a tough guy, nuclear weapons and the world's biggest army and all these different things. He's a tough fella. But I want to remind us of something. Everything has a weak spot. Everything has flaw. The strongest a tree, the strongest stone, everything has a weak spot. Nothing is invincible. Maybe you might have to study the weak spot, but everything has a weak spot. In martial arts, you are taught that the human body has many weak spots. And when you are in a conflict, when you are in a fight, you just don't hit any type of target, any place on the body. You want to concentrate on your opponent's weak spots so that you can bring your opponent down as quickly as possible and win the, the fight. The number one problem that the so-called Negro, the descendant of slaves, born in America, having dark skin, born in America, our problem dealing with the white man, simply, we are afraid of him. I know many of you say, I ain't scared. I, I'm not, I, I ain't scared of no cracker and blah, blah. The reality is, and we see in your actions, you are afraid. You are afraid. Because when people are not afraid, it's very difficult to talk you out of a fight. Say, look, man, that dude is too big for you. You need to leave that cat alone here. I don't care how I'm ready because you're not afraid. You don't care that this guy is bigger than you. You don't care if this guy has a gun. You don't care nothing. I'm, you are on the war path. But when you are a coward, you have, you have to take in consideration, wow, this guy awfully big. He got a gun. He got a pair of nunchucks. You have to take all these different things in consideration because you are a coward. Another problem that many of us don't want to admit, we love, we love the white man. We do. We love the white man. We love his money. We love his gold, his diamonds, his TV shows, his movies, everything about the world that he forced us in. Y'all said that we are forced involuntarily, so but you have you are in love with it. And above all, I think uh, we have a serious problem is because you really don't know how to fight him. You don't know how to fight. Going to a debate, listening to black scholarship and what God going to do and all these lectures that we, that we go to don't teach you and don't give us a suggestion or advice. How do we fight this guy? who is so powerful, he's so powerful, you may even call him a god. You worried about what he gonna do if you do this. We, we can't fight the, the white man because he'll do this and he'll do that. 
See, that's the, the talk of a coward. You have to worry about what they going to do. I don't care what he's going to do. You hurt me, damn it. I'm going to hurt you right back. It's simple as that. You don't know how to fight. But you watch boxing all the time. You a Bruce Lee fan. A Jim Kelly fan. You watch mixed martial arts. You know about fighting. But when it comes to dealing with this guy, you don't know how to develop strategy. You don't know how to develop a method in order to deal with, with this enemy. You don't know when to throw a punch, how to throw a punch, when to retreat, when to back off, when to duck, when to slide here, when to slide that. You, don't, you have no idea of how to deal with this fella. You don't know how to fight. But see, like I tell you, there's a way to fight this guy. We understand we don't have the weapons. We don't have the people. Because many of our people love the white man. So you have a limited amount of soldiers that you're going to put on the battlefield. And you must make the best out of the people that you have. Now, see... The best defense is a strong offense. Going on 500 years, we have always been on the defense. Responding to whatever the white man does to us. And then you respond. When you should be, it should be opposite, you should always keep him on the defense. He should always worry about what the Negro is going to do. But you don't. Because you're happy when the cracker give you a break and leave you the hell alone. But it's not going to take long because 500 years of history tell you he's going to be kicking your ass very, very soon. Now I want to give you an example, see, of myself when I was locked up. Many of you know that I was unjustly, unjustly incarcerated. See, this is how I play my enemy. Of course, I mean, I'm, I'm under their control. I'm locked up. They have me. So what can a defenseless guy, what can I do? Well, I came up with the strategy. Well, since you want me locked up. <laughs> now listen, since you want me locked up, then let's play lock up. What do you mean by this? What, what, what you going to do, Negro? See, in the institution, they make everybody get in line and go down to chop. Okay? But you want me locked up. So I decided I'm not going to go anywhere. I'll be perfectly happy and stay in my little room. And that's why that's why I remain. You got to, you have to go to the child. Get in, I'm not getting in line to do nothing. You want me locked up? You happy that I'm incarcerated? Well, let's play that game. Now, under your law, you have to give me three meals a day. There's nowhere in your law where it says I have to get in the line and go down and get it. They know this. They know they have to feed me. They know if, they, if I get sick, they have to take care of my sickness. If there's something wrong with my teeth, they have to take care of my tooth. So I'm taking advantage of the law. There's nowhere in the law, there's nowhere in hospital policy where I have to get in line and go down to lunch. Bring my breakfast to me. I'm going to stay in my room. I'm going to stay locked up in the lockup. Bring it to me. This got them angry. You know why this got them angry? Oh, wow. See, why did this get them angry? This gotten them angry because it means more work. See, they want to lock you up. They want to mistreat you. But it has no, it don't bring no, no consequence to them. There's no work. I'm making them work. So somebody has to go down to the kitchen. And at that time, I was a Muslim. I don't eat pork. 
and all this kind of stuff. So you got to make sure I get the right diet and you bring it to my room and then somebody has to take the tray back. Make them work. We sit around, get our ass kicked for 500 years and they suffer no consequences. They, you don't make them work. Here you are, call yourself a god. Call yourself the original man. You have no original thoughts. You have no original strategy. You're doing the exact same things that failed 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago. Don't work. You have the supreme wisdom, but you're too stupid to come up with a fighting strategy to deal with your enemy. You have to make them work. You have no, you are, you claim to be some kind of God, but you don't have the confidence in yourself to deal with this vicious, wicked enemy. There was a scene from a, a, a movie. What was the name of that movie? I forgot what it was. Anyway, it was this fella. What's the name of that movie? It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, oh, it, I was just think, I just thought about it. Um, man, anyway, it was this guy dealing with his enemy. And he told this fella, because he has a lot of confidence in himself, he says, I'm going to take my right foot, Billy Jack, that's the name of the movie, Billy Jack. I think it was made in the 1970s, late 1970s, early 80s, somewhere in there. Billy Jack told this guy, I'm going to take my right foot and kick you across your left across your left face. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Now, this guy has a gun in his hand, and he's standing in a way where he know he, he believes that he can counter whatever Billy Jack does, and he's smiling like, yeah, right. Billy Jack tells him, I'm going to take this right foot and put it across the left part of your face. And there's nothing that you can do about it. And Billy Jack took his right foot and put it across that guy's left side of that guy's face. And there was nothing that he can do. Billy Jack was confident he can do that. See, here you are talking about, uh, remember, Cointel Pro, Agents and Spy. When you have the confidence... I don't care how many agents, I don't care how many spies, I don't care what these what this cracker have. When you have the confidence, when you know how to fight, there's nothing that these people can do when you come up with the right strategy. Can you imagine, since these crackers, they want to lock black folks up and want you in prison, can you imagine if only 10% of us quit our jobs and decided, let's go to prison? Because see, in prison, free health care, three meals a day, blah, blah, blah. Let's flood the prison. Since you want black folks in prison, let us all go. Women, children, your dog, let's all go to prison. Make them work. Since you want me in jail, let's go to jail. Quit your job. Go to the store and just eat all the food that you want to out of the store. Take your car, go to the gas station, put, it, put all the gas that you want to. Make them put you in jail. Let's go to jail. Let's fill the prison. There are 20 to 40 million black folks in this country. If you've done that just for a few days, you you make it, you working the hell out of them, you, you mess up their whole system. Oh, wow. That's better than any boycott that has ever happened. That's just an idea. It's so many things that you could do if you had the confidence. Instead of running away from the white man, fight him. Learn his law. Take advantage of his law. Take advantage of anything that's out there. Woo, man. You just don't understand. And none of these sad sack teachers and scholars, none of them are encouraging and inspiring the people in a manner to get this beast off their back once and for all. Fight. Fight for your life. Stand up and be a man. Stand up and be a woman. Make our children proud. I want to say, secondly, that this ministry 
does support and I do advocate what we call reparations for the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. I do advocate it is good, it is needed, it is a wonderful thing. I also would advocate and support what many call repatriation, even though it is not clear and it is not really factual to say that all dark skinned people, we who are the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, have ancestry in in or upon the continent called uh, Africa. However, since I do advocate separation, we need to go somewhere, either overthrow this wicked government or little by little begin a process to separate yourself from your vicious, this vicious wicked enemy that you have become comfortable with going on 500 years and your continual living with your enemy only makes you love them more. <laughs> Woo! Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You live with those who abuse you. And when you live with those who abuse you, you begin to view them sort of human. Even though they punch you in your face. They take a brick and bust you upside your head. No matter what they do to you, you still view them as human. We're going to talk about that as we speak upon what we call reparations. Reparations means simply to repair. It does not mean giving checks out, making folks millionaires overnight. It does not mean that. It could, but it does not mean. It means to repair. It means to make whole once you destroy. When we go to court and someone causes you injury, it is not the intent of the court to make you a millionaire. The intent of the court is to make you whole from what you lost. The injury that caused you. So if I am, if I am in an accident, and I lose my arm, then you just cost me, I have a lifetime. Who knows how long I would have my arm if it was not for this accident. So the court will reward the victim or the plaintiff a certain amount of funds because now I have to live, I don't have an arm. The purpose of reparations is simply to repair, to make whole. And in the case of the so-called Negro in America, not only is it physical, but also it is mental. One of the first things that this uh, government could really do if it wanted to, because it has the information. We think we have the information. We really don't. We're sitting around here guessing about our real identity. The government actually knows our origins. They know. But they will not tell us exactly who we are, our ancestry. Not that we even should go back to that because you are, we are generations removed. We are no longer that. But it would be nice to know who my daddy is. It would be nice to know who my mother was. But of course, the government likes for us to go back and forth. They love to see the Hebrew Israelites fighting against the black Muslims and the black Muslims fighting against the Christians and the Christians fighting against uh, the Nawabians and so forth, all these different identities that we think that we are. So it's nothing but a form of division that benefits your enemy. And speaking of the enemy, Although I advocate and I will support reparations, I will not beg this cracker. 
I will not beg these demons, these redneck, pale faces, wicked she animals, uh, he animals, whatever. They are no good to us. I'm not going to beg them. You should not have to beg a human being. I'm going to say that again. You shouldn't have to beg a human being for reparation. You shouldn't even have to take somebody to court when you know that you caused them injury. You should not have to do that. When a man, now listen, when a man really loves a woman and he does something wrong to her, she does not beg him, will you love me? What happens is the man takes the first step and he buys flowers and he buys candy and he will take her to a, a beautiful dinner and if necessary, he will get on his knees and say, look, I am so sorry what I've done to you. I want to try to make this up. He's trying to repair the relationship that he had with the woman he loves. The problem here is that the Caucasian people of this nation, they do not love us. I don't care how many interracial relationships that you see. I don't care how many, I don't want to be nasty, but how many penises you done lapped on and vaginas you done licked and who you done lay with these Caucasian people. They don't mind sleeping with you. They don't mind marrying you and loving you. Because they are in control. They are, you are still part of the, they are, you are still their little slave. You are like a pet to them. Some of them will marry their dog. Some of them will marry their cat. And that's all that you are to them. They are not coming into black power. They're not trying to build Africa. You are still a slave, you are still under their control, you're still under their influence. So they don't care nothing about all that. You should not have to beg these people for reparations. But see, you believe that they have some kind of humanity. These people, don't you get it? These people are not human beings. They are materialistic, wicked, Demons. I don't know what other way to uh, describe them. Aliens. Foreigners to humanity. They call themselves mankind or kind of a man. They look like a man, but they don't have the attributes of a man. Because a man will feel some type of humanity, compassion, and mercy to another man. Especially when... They know they caused this great injury. And this great injury is the reason behind or the root cause of the condition of the people that they uh, that exist right now, the children. It's generational injury. You're dealing with some wicked, wicked, evil, satanic type people. But you view them, you think, they have mercy in their heart. The descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, we have been here going on 500 years. 500 years. You and I, our people, we should have gotten reparations generations ago. And if we had gotten reparations and we are in this condition that we find ourselves in, the only one that can be blamed is ourselves because we were given the tools, we were made repaired, or at least there was a great, a good attempt to be made whole, and something went wrong somewhere. And it falls, and after a certain period of time, you must accept full blame. Right now, I don't care what these Negroes talk about, all blame falls on those who caused us this harm. If I don't have my arm, I don't care what you said, I'm going to blame the person that caused my arm to be amputated. This is the type of mentality that we're dealing with. You're dealing with these Caucasian people in America and some silly, stupid Negroes, but they don't count. But this racist government is like a child who gets a cookie. Can I have a cookie? 
So you give them a cookie. Then later on, you have children that come into the house and they want a cookie. And the one that was there already have that cookie. They want cookie too. Uh, they look at it because they, now that they already had a cookie, but they want a cookie because now they see these others with a cookie. I want a cookie too. You know that's not fair. You already had your cookie, but that's the mentality that we're dealing with when we're dealing with these races in this nation. They don't want you to have nothing. They already had that cookie. 300, 400 years of free slave labor. And now the children who deserve, in fact, those of you who know anything about law, let's say for instance, if I died in the car wreck, my children, my relatives have the right to sue whoever caused my death. So it don't make no it makes no difference whether or not the slaves are not here. We are the children. We are the relatives. We are the survivors of those the descendants of those people. And if they since you since they even admit those slaves they deserve reparations. We are their children. But again, you're not dealing with human beings. You're dealing with some wicked, demonic, satanic. All these diabolical, childish mentality. They don't want you to have nothing. Because see, reparations will put us in a different place in society. And they love to see you on the bottom. Everybody wants to see this. Poor. We It's already bad enough. We have been destroyed and we have been discriminated against and murdered and 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 raped and all these things for hundreds of years and they still don't want you to have nothing and they give you Jay-Z and Beyonce and Will Smith and Oprah and give us a, a few examples of what we could do they deserve reparations too the ones that pulled themselves on their bootstraps so you say it don't make any difference We are part of a people. But see, that's, a, that's the thing again. You must become a people. You must become this collective group. But you cannot unless you have a common identity. But he's black. He's Negro. He's colored. He's uh, comedic. He's uh, Christian. They love this division. And they are happy that you and I can't get it together. So that you can really make a serious attempt to seek reparations. But again, you shouldn't have to beg them for nothing. It is better to begin the process just like the Bible said. Or God told to Moses in the scriptures. Separate. Let me get a, a little comfortable here. I have a question, or I just want to make a comment, actually. Oh, did I did I tell you who I am? Many of you should know who I am. You you mean to tell me you don't know who I am? <laughs> who, who I am? <laughs> well, I am Soul Brother Number One, the uh, gatekeeper. The host of this program uh, called The Realities Tip on Earth, The Mighty One, <clears throat> Angel Snup Nup Seven. I just want to speak with us and bring forth a comment. Many of you know that this ministry, this rostrum, does not advocate and advise and suggest that we reject all religious uh, teachings and spirituality and the worship of God and all these different things that we have grown uh, to embrace. 
you know that I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I make reference to certain parts in these Bibles, uh, the Bible, or the Quran, whatever else. I, there is benefit in, in so many things, but we must learn and be able to discern uh, what is beneficial and what is detrimental. So I don't have to believe in the Bible, but yet it's still coming from a Bible background, coming from someone with a Quranic background, someone who was just like you. I'm no different. I come from the Christian church. I was a Christian and I was a Muslim and I, I understand more science temple and comedic teaching. I'm just like you. However, the difference, the difference between you and I is that I have decided to re-examine all these things that I was taught, understand what is beneficial and what to throw away and to think for myself and become fluid in my thinking process rather than uh, be solid or rigid in my thinking process. I don't want to be that because that shows that you are not alive. It shows that you are not alive. Anything that is alive is always progressing, always evolving, always changing. But when you have decided, this is how I am, this is the way I'm going to be. And you're not changing, you're not evolving, you're not adapting to different environments. If you're dead, there's no need for that. Those of whom are in the grave don't have to adopt, they don't have to change, they don't have to do anything except lay there lay there and decompose that's all and that's what you find in this so called black community a bunch of minds who are de decomposing and you actually believe that you can come to this rostrum as a dead man as a walking zombie and you really think that you're going to put me in my place. The dead cannot place the living anywhere. It is the living that moves the dead. Mm. That's not what I wanted to talk about, <laughs> really. I, uh, in fact, I'm off the subject. I have to look again to see what I'm supposed. To oh, I know what. I'm That's why I started off. I started off talking about this God this God thing, this, this ministry does not uh, advocate religious and religion and spirituality. There's only one real spirituality and that is an emotional connection to a, another life. Whether it is a human being or to a tree or to a frog or a goat, that's all that it is, an emotional connection to, to another life form has nothing to do with some mystery force flying through the air and you and all this other nonsense the superhero stuff that y'all teaching what I wanted to say and I would like to make this comment but based on this based on religious teaching I would say, and I come to the conclusion, that if God, this God, the Supreme Being, would choose a people, this God would choose the descendants of slaves born in America, having dark skin, as his or her people. Why? Why? It's very simple. Well, you, the Jews are the chosen people of God. No God in their right mind would choose Jews or Americans or Africans or many other, other people on this planet. I'm not saying that to put anyone down or, or whatever, but it's a choice 
God is trying to make a choice here. Why is God choosing anybody? Aren't we all the children of God? Well, God must make a choice because in the scriptures we are taught that this supreme being is to create a new heaven and a new earth. So you don't want to bring a mess into the into your house. When you when you are um, building a new house, you don't want nobody that's nasty and filthy coming into your house with dirty shoes and things of this nature. So if God is building or wishing to create a new reality, he needs a new people. And this people called black people, the descendants of slaves born in America, we are absolutely new. Born from tragedy. Born from the same type of suffering and treatment and being despised and rejected just like the Jesus of the Bible. The black man and woman in America does not have blood on our hands. The only blood we have on our hands because we were directed to murder, to lie, to steal, to kill by our slave master. But besides that, we don't have a history of doing anything to anybody. Now, the God would choose his people the same way that God would choose his, his prophet. A prophet must be honest. A prophet must have certain attributes, honesty and cleanliness and, and uh, good character. The black man and woman in America, we have all these different things. In fact, we really are the only example of a people who actually do love everybody. Everybody can come into the black community. They don't have no real problems. We don't bother nobody. The black man and woman in America, we have no problems with other folks. In fact, even physically, when you look at so-called African Americans, we can look like so-called African. Some of us, we even have the little slant eye thing, look sort of Asian. Uh, because we carry so much different things in our bloodline. So we are actually the rainbow, and in us, you see all the people of the earth. We are the living rainbow coalition, like Jesse Jackson would say. Now you will say, look how you act. Look, uh, you, 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 you're thugs and your ratchets. Of course, the God would not want the chosen people in the current condition that we find ourselves in. But it's just like when you're digging for diamonds. When you first find that diamond, it's not shiny. It's, it looks rough. It's dull. But see, when you're dealing with this God, they tell me, God knows how to begin a process because God knows what he has. God knows that there is a diamond here. The only thing the so-called Negro has to be is cleaned up. Knock the, what Jay-Z Jay -Z said? Knock the dirt off your shoulder. Knock the dirt off. Then shine you up. Then, then, Put the little cuts on how they do diamonds. You are diamond in the rough. And because you're so clean and clear. Don't have all that baggage. Other people have been given the opportunity and they have failed. They have become materialistic. They become arrogant and 
and what's the other word? Oh, snotty nose and whatever. You had your opportunity, Jew, Jewish person. You had your opportunity. You sitting, you have a state called Israel. The only thing you want to do is drop bombs on folks and keep trouble going on. Why would God choose you? And you take your power and your influence to exploit others. Why would, how, how and why would God choose somebody like you? And all these other people around the earth. You have serious problems. However, God needs an example of people of how the human being really should be. And because we come through hell, why wouldn't we qualify to have the mercy and the compassion of a God since we've been through hell over 300 years? Why we wouldn't be the first to be allowed to go into heaven? And that's exactly what the creation wants for you and me, the descendants of slaves born in America. Clean you up. You cannot enter a new reality the way that you are right now. You and I, we're nothing but a dark-skinned version of people who are hell raisers. Why would a God want you to enter his new house? So you got to be cleaned up. And if you decide, since you you want to, if you don't want to accept the gift, then the only thing that will happen, then that gift will be passed on to somebody else more deserving. But who is more deserving than a people who have been rejected, despised, totally destroyed, turned into an animal? And because they keep you in this condition where you can't get this and you can't get that and you have to struggle, you still maintain an animalistic, savage type behavior. And instead of turning on those of whom deny you, you turn it on yourself. Why wouldn't God have mercy and compassion on a people who have done nothing to nobody to deserve this kind of treatment in hell? And become the first people, the first chosen, the first ones to go into a new house. And you being the first ones in the house and those who begin to try to come into the door, you stop them at the door. Uh -uh 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 -uh. Wipe your feet. Take off your shoes. Put them over there. See? And the former things shall pass away. All this baggage that y'all black folks have, you got to let it go. And I guarantee you, as soon as we begin to let all this baggage, all this stuff that we think that we know, once you begin to let it go, watch. The natural process will begin, that exodus. And next thing you know, that door start opening. You will see it very clear. Heaven has arrived.